Sting. Sting's got, he's got the red and the black. Sting, he's joined Nash. He's with the black and red. There's no doubt about that now. Sting is on the wolf back side. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. We've been talking about all the things happening in the comic book industry in regards to Diamond Comics distributors. Obviously, they end up having to shut down during the pandemic. They ended up they, they couldn't pay their vendors. They had to make delayed payments. They had a, a, a structured payment program that was put out there that basically they were going to have to pay it for product that they had already delivered late, so on, so on. They they did come back online. They had the, the hashtag back to comeback campaign. Hasn't gone quite according to plan. There's been a lot of uh, feedback regarding the, the quality of customer service right now with a lot of retailers. I guess it's it's been very poor. Diamond Com- Comic representatives have, have given people like generic email address and things like that. Don't address them uh, directly like they did in the past. And today we're going to talk about a few other issues that have come up recently because I'm going to talk to Aaron Sparrow, freelance writer, freelance editor. He also orders comics for a couple of local comic shops in California. The High Sparrow himself. How are you doing, Aaron? I'm doing pretty good. I always think it's funny that you call me the High Sparrow. That, that always cracks me up uh, because, uh, you know, if there's if there's any High Sparrow in comics that's uh, that's judging people's righteousness, it's certainly not me. <laughs> wow. But, I like, but yes. I, like the, I, I like the name anyway. It's meant very lovingly. I do want to say this to the viewers out there. If this is your first time on Thinking Critical or you've been coming around but haven't made the leap yet, do what Aaron did. Subscribe to the channel. You will not regret it. Hit the bell for notifications. Give us a huge thumbs up if you enjoy this uh, video. Give us an enormous thumbs down if you don't. Either way, we would love to hear your feedback. And I and I did hear your feedback. Aaron, people wanted to know how they could contact you or find you or whatever. So there will be some information about Aaron Sparrow if you want to find him on social media. He does have a YouTube channel, although it's not exactly you, you don't put out a lot of content, but that will be there in the in the uh, video description as well for people looking for more information about Aaron or or how to contact him in the future. Yeah, you know, if you want to just find me and take a swing at me, I don't know. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> plenty of ways, uh, plenty of ways to find me. Yeah, and no, I don't, uh, I don't update my my channel all that much. I've still never kind of figured out exactly what it is that I, I want it to be. So uh, still, you know, thinking about that and the time that I can devote to it. Uh, I much prefer coming on channels like yours, which already have a format that I can just pop in when I have time and uh, and comment. So that's uh, that's been a lot of fun. But yeah, I'll figure out what to do with my channel soon. Soon enough. Well, we we love having you here over here on Thinking Critical because you bring wonderful insight. You bring a wealth of experience within the industry. Today, we're we're going to be drawing on a different kind of experience. Like I said, you do order comics and other things for a couple of uh, local comic shops in the California area. Area in the state, you know, I, I believe you're in uh, Los Angeles, correct? Yeah, Southern California is where where the shops are that I uh, that I deal with. And you've noticed something like, yes, there has been some uh, a decrease in customer service from Diamond. Certainly, they did shut down. We know during that they like and definitely halted their distribution of uh, of gaming, which was another part of the Jeppy Family Enterprises. So today we're not specifically talking about comic books. We're talking about collectible distribution, which is another big thing uh, of Diamond's business. Obviously, that goes hand in hand with with comic books. You go in the comic shop. There's normally a lot of collectibles, things like that on the shelves. People, a lot of times, will order those from Diamond as well. But there's an issue, right, Aaron? There is. There is. And let me just, uh, before I get into that, let me just, for those who may not know, let me kind of just give you a breakdown of how uh, how comic shops order from Diamond. If you're a small shop and, you know, you want to carry a full product range, but you don't necessarily have the ability to set up accounts with all these different vendors. Like, you know, let's say, you know, you want to carry some aliens and predator stuff. So you want to, you know, reach out to NECA who produces, you know, action figures of those, uh, you know, those licenses. And, you know, you want to carry some Hasbro things, you know, some Marvel legends to tie into your comic book business, but you're not big enough to get a Hasbro account. Generally what diamond has done is they are a one-stop shop distributor for collectible stores so you can order your comic books you can and and vendors like NECA or Hasbro you know toy manufacturers Mattel you know all the big ones and then some of the smaller ones as well will offer Diamond their product and you know for a slight increase in feed Diamond distributes it their distributor that's what they should be doing right well during the pandemic they shut all that down what I have noticed since they have come back online 
first of all, with the comics, we've discussed the fact that comics are arriving damaged worse than ever before, uh, missing product, you know, just you're not getting your books. I was talking to a couple of retailers tonight and they were telling me how, you know, they ordered 100 copies of this book to get the 1 in 100 variant and the 1 in 100 variant arrives damaged. So then they report it to Diamond and Diamond, by the time Diamond gets back to them, they're like, well, we don't have any more of that variant to send you. So the question is now, what happens with those 100 books that I ordered to get the variant that I didn't get? You know, am I now stuck with those 100 books? Do those get refunded? Do I get to return them to you? What happens? So these are the kind of things on the comic end that retailers are having to deal with. On the toy end, what we specifically want to talk about tonight, you know, your toys, your collectibles, statues, you know, anything that falls under that. Diamond used to carry a full range of products. And the way things usually worked was a company like Hasbro would come out and they would say, okay, we've got this new line of, you know, we've got this new set of Marvel Legends that's all based on Deadpool. And the next day, it would be available to order from Diamond. Since they've come back online, that has not been happening with a wide variety of products. You know, it's been very hit and miss. It's been very spotty. They haven't seemed to be carrying a full range of the different products from these toy manufacturers and these collectible manufacturers. So not only that, but they're purging their system of things that were previously available for order. So you can't order them anymore. You can't even look the, up those items to see what you ordered in the past. So when you get something from Diamond and you're like, wait, I know I ordered more than two cases of this. And you go into their system to look it up, which would be the easiest way, you know, if you haven't downloaded it and, and have it in your own system, you go to look it up and that item no longer even appears. So you can't double check to see what you've been shorted out of, you know, off of your initial order. That has got to be a, a ginormous headache, obviously, for, for managers and, and owners of collectible shops, comic shops, and things like that. But it's also it's, it's a bad sign about Diamond. Why aren't they carrying these products anymore? Did they send out a notice to these shops saying, hey, we won't be carrying a full line of these collectibles that we've been distributing to you for years now? There's been no communication along those lines. We haven't gotten anything uh, that says that, you know, we're cutting back on, you know, on any of the product lines that we've offered in the past. There's been no communication as far as like, hey, here's why these things are no longer appearing in our database. There's been nothing. And the other concerning thing, the other problem that we're running into with the distribution of collectibles is not only that you can't reference them within Diamond's own system anymore, but they're also changing up the game as to how they deliver it to you. For example, one specific shop that I deal with does local pickup. So there's a warehouse that Diamond dumps all of the product off at. They, you know, it's on pallets and you just go and you pick it up. You know, it's local. So it's, you know, easier than going and getting it here and then having it shipped to you. The problem is since Diamond's come back online, they are arbitrarily shipping things to the shop. They're still pickup, but some of the product with no seeming rhyme or reason will be shipped to the shop. And so that when they get it, it is horrifically damaged. Uh, just cases of like Marvel Legends figures that they just send in the shipper box. They're not even packed into a larger box to protect them. So they'll get sent FedEx to the shop and it looks like someone has kicked the product down a flight of stairs. So then the shop says, well, we're not going to take this. We have to return it. But the way, you know, you then have to wait for Diamond to credit it. Uh, one shop, they send it all back. Diamond sent them UPS labels for them to ship back the damaged product. They shipped it back before it arrived at Diamond's Tennessee warehouse, Diamond rerouted it through UPS so that it came right back to them. It didn't even make it to Tennessee where it was supposed to go. It was, was turned around and sent back to them and they refused it again and they've had to refuse it two more times. So Diamond is getting charged free for every single time that that has to bounce back and forth. And the question is, are they going to try to pass that on to the retailer? Are they going to absorb that? You know, what is, what is it that's going to happen in those situations? And you can't get a straight answer. All right, so I guess uh, you know Aaron's microphone was in a beard, his beard there for a little bit. So if you heard some rustling in the video, we do apologize. Hopefully that's fixed from here on out. So Aaron, obviously those those uh, fees are going to have to be paid for from somebody. Diamond, not exactly, or Jeppy Family Enterprise is not exactly flush with cash right now. They had to take off a big, take out a big PPP loan. We also know that uh, Jeppy himself, you know, when he went out on his big tour talking about all the, how everything was great was talking about how they had to take out a lot of loans and things of that nature just arbitrarily changing the way that they're delivering product to stores without consulting them it's certainly going to add on costs on, on the back end correct 
yes, there's, uh, you know, freight costs associated with having things delivered that is much higher than your delivery costs would normally be if you were picking it up. So, you know, a store that's already struggling from being locked down is now going to have to pay these additional freight charges. And, you know, there was the guy from Diamond who came out and said, like, well, you know, you have to understand you're not getting as many comics because DC's not there, so we're not hitting those freight rates. But that's fine for comics, but why are you shipping me things that I didn't ask you to ship me? You know, just you're sending me things in the most expensive way possible and you're cutting into retailers' profit margins, you know, in an already cash poor business that is struggling. Not, you know, not our shop specifically that I'm dealing with, but, you know, shops in general are having to absorb Mm -hmm. those costs. And, you know, many of them are not going to be able to. Retail nationwide is is in a very bad way, whether it's comic shops or anything. If it's brick and mortar, with everything that's happened with the pandemic and obviously in certain cities, we still have uh, a lot of unrest and things of that nature. It's it's not a good time for retail. It really is not, and so any additional cost is just going to exacerbate the situation and drive the industry further into the ground. So, Aaron, you, you know what what what's the speculation? Why is is this happening? Is are they no longer able, uh, able to order these products and distribute them? Do you think that they cut down maybe their uh, their employee numbers and they just don't have the manning to to take care of this uh, service that they were providing before? Do, do I, they not have money to order them? What is it? I think it's probably a perfect storm of everything. I think that there's probably a lot of employees that they either didn't bring back or that didn't come back. You know, there's a lot of employees that probably saw the writing on the wall. I know that our credit analyst, uh, I believe that she took early retirement when they locked down. You know, so she's not there anymore. And, and you know, even hand it off to somebody else. Uh, I think that you've got you know another problem with if they're structuring payments to publishers which we know that they were uh you know we saw that uh the live stream that steve jeppy was on with publishers where he sort of took like almost a a mafia don uh, approach to talking to them Uh, i I know that he he shut ross ritchie down in in a way that i i couldn't even believe because uh you know i i didn't and i didn't think ross would take it but i guess when the guy's holding your money there's not a lot that you can do uh but you know he told basically told publishers we're changing the term you know we're altering the deal pray i don't alter it any further (laughs) you know he told them that you're going to get structured payments and that's the way it's going to be and there's nothing that they could do about it so if he's doing that with comic uh distributors or you know comic publishers I'm fairly certain that there's other vendors, larger vendors that carry, you know, that, or that offer toys and collectibles that probably are owed a lot more money than the publishers were owed that are probably getting the same treatment. I was like, look, we're going to pay you a structured, you know, you're going to get paid when we feel like paying you or when we can pay you. And I'm sure a lot of those companies are saying, okay, well, there's no, you know, we're going to cut you off from new product until you pay for the product that you've already taken possession of. So I think that that's probably reducing the amount of things that they're able to offer. And if that continues, you know, you're just, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, as they say. And I don't know how long Diamond is viable if that's what they're doing. It's pretty crazy when you, when you think about it, uh, these toy manufacturers, there isn't a single point of failure in their distribution lines. Yes, Diamond is there to distribute collectibles to these comic shops and anybody that has a Diamond account. But you you can order these uh, these products directly from them. You don't need to go through Diamond to get them. So they're in a different, you know, they're in a different ball game. They don't have to play by Diamond's rules. They can kind of cut them off. Whereas most of the comic book publishers, they're you know they're working in a monopoly. They're they they were they kind of came out against Lunar UCS when, when DC brought them on board, and you know they're kind of sticking with what they know, even if it's not on the best terms or even terms that are agreeable to them. Yeah. And there's a lot of rumors that, you know, I, I hear, I take it with a grain of salt because, you know, you never know where these, where this information is coming from, but I've heard from multiple sources that Marvel is looking at leaving diamond and, you know, possibly going with lunar or, you know, some other distributor. So we may be back into the old nineties situation of having to get comics from different distributors, which used to be the way that it was. You could go to capital city or you could go to diamond uh, you know, and, and I think there were a couple of other smaller ones out there as well. Uh, but you had options. And if Marvel, you know, decides that Diamond isn't viable and they decide to go in another direction, I, I don't know where that leaves Diamond, especially if they can't deliver toys and collectibles to these shops that need them. You know, you've already got shops that are kind of at their mercy. And a lot of the smaller shops, Diamond is their only game in town. You know, we saw when DC announced that they were going with Lunar, we saw the whole industry freak out, you know, from, from Eric Stevenson 
you know, writing that, <laughs> that letter that was just ridiculous about how DC had basically betrayed the entire industry, you know, when all they were doing is trying to survive, you know, they saw the writing on the wall while the rest of the industry wanted to keep their head in the sand. You know, you've, <laughs> and, and you saw retailers come out against it too. Like, what do you mean I have to order from, you know, two distributors? You know, I can't just order it all from one. That's going to increase my workload by 57 hours a week. You know, and it's like, you know, every business on the face of the earth orders from multiple distributors, you know, every normal business. You've just gotten used to this because it's been a monopoly for so long and you don't want to change your ways, but it's going to have to change because Diamond is not, you know, they're not bringing what they need to bring to the game anymore. And I don't know if it's just a matter of them checking out or just not being able to come back online after shutting down, but it, it, I think that it's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Aaron, obviously, you know, I have a comic book YouTube channel. I am a huge fan of the hobby. I'm, I'm very passionate about comic books. It's in my best interest. It's it's it, it's what I want is a vibrant, healthy comic book industry that, that's bringing in new readers and, and, and putting out good products and things like that. You are a comic book writer. You are a comic book editor. It is in your best interest that there is a healthy, vibrant comic book industry You know, you, for, for you to uh, pr perform your vocation in. Obviously, Diamond being a healthy company is a huge part of that. I don't want people to think that we're bagging on Diamond or that we're hoping that for their demise, because that is nothing could be further from the truth. It's better for me. It's better for you. It's better for all for the viewers on the channel. If Diamond is healthy and putting out uh, good service and things like that, but we do have to talk about these things because they are happening. I, I completely agree with you that uh, you know just just anybody who thinks that you know we're hoping for Diamond to fail that's that is like, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, you know I love the comics industry. I love the media. Well, I, let me put, let me correct that. I love the comics media. The industry itself, I am less in love with. Uh, the industry needs to change. It needs to be more aggressive. And that goes for Diamond, too. You know, they've, they've kind of sat on their laurels for so long. And now that the wolves are at the door, I don't think that they know how to, you know, change their business to change with the times. And that's what worries me. Diamond needs to change. The industry needs to change if it is going to continue and if it's going to be healthy. And that's what I want. I love this medium. I think that comics can do things that no other entertainment medium can when it's done right. And I think that, you know, this this situation that we're going through right now, this could be the shit in which something good might grow. Or it could just be shit. It just depends on the way that these companies pivot and deal with the challenges that they're facing. So my hope is that Diamond will, you know, get in the game and really start to fix these problems that they're having. Because I don't know if they don't if they don't start fixing these problems, I don't know how long they have to learn the lessons that they need to learn. So my hope is that they will learn them quickly and that the industry will become stronger and become healthier. But I, the cynic in me is just looking at, you know, looking at the industry and the people who run it and, you know, the things that the industry is still fighting about that are just so inconsequential to you know, everything that is going on, it's like we're fighting about the least important things. And what we need to be doing is getting quality books distributed regularly into the hands of retailers, getting people excited about comics, addressing the things that are hurting the industry, like, in, uh, you know, professional behavior, like the price of comic books, the b barriers that we have to getting new readers interested. You know, these are all the things that have needed to be addressed for years and they haven't been. And now that we're at the 11th hour, you know, now that we're five minutes to midnight, do we have enough time to actually do it? Well, we don't if nobody's going to talk about it and nobody is going to get on the ball and start driving the conversation. So I think that's one of the areas that YouTube has been at the forefront, you know, years before this, uh, this COVID uh, accelerated the collapse of the comic book industry, YouTubers have been warning about the iceberg ahead. And, uh, you know, now that we're up on the iceberg, you know, people are still denying that it's happening. And, and we, we can't keep doing that if, you know, we all want this medium to survive. I couldn't agree uh, more with you, my friend. I did, Like I mentioned earlier, Aaron does have his own YouTube channel. There is going to be a link uh, in the video description. You can uh, sub to it here in a few seconds. Aaron, thank you so much for joining me today. The High Sparrow in the house, bringing, bringing a lot of information. Thank you, Wes. Appreciate it.